Welcome back to Oral Tradition, my friends, my subscribers, my viewers. It's been a while, but thank God I'm back. I was really doing some other stuff the other day, and I was able to do any videos, but here I am today. And um, this, this topic has been impressed upon my spirit, and because I haven't done any videos in a while, I was kind of laid back and said, you know, I'm going to do it, but I'll wait. But then it the impression was so strong that I said, you know what, let me do it. And I said, okay, I'm getting ready to do it. I even got the computer out and everything and get myself ready to do the video. All of a sudden, I realized that I have no space on the computer. And I said, what is this? But anyway, I played around with the computer. I didn't even know what to do, but I finally deleted some programs off. And then I was able to do the video. So I'm here. So welcome back to my channel again. And if you're coming to us for the first time, um, welcome. And this is Sister Edwards with our Sunday School. So I would love you now to go with me to Second Timothy <clears throat> chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading from verse 4. Great desire to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in your grandmother Louis and your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that is in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou store up the gift of God that is in thee, which is in thee by the putting on of hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this lesson will be a blessing to somebody. In Jesus' name. No, this was the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy because he had not seen him for a while and he, he was happy to see him and he was telling him, listen, your genuine faith in Christ is so evident. It was in your grandmother and it was in your mother. So now it's they, they left it to you, right? My main focus is verse 5. It is very important that we train our children in the things of God. And what they, what people are actually trying to do is to get rid of the older people so they can get rid of the history of godly things. There is a very serious attack on our godly heritage. Very serious attack. Not on our cultural heritage or our family heritage, but our, our nation's heritage. No, it's about our godly heritage. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is what we should be holding on to. But we are losing it. <clears throat> the powers that be want to get rid of everything that is godly and everything that is righteous and live in a state of anarchy. And if young people are not taught the history, what we were doing years ago that kept us until this day, there is nothing for them to teach their children. You know, there will be nothing, nothing godly, nothing righteous. Everything goes. But if, if it feels good, I do it. You know, whatever feels good to me, whatever I want to do, I just go ahead and do it. But that's not how it's supposed to be. Um, in the case of the elders, um, without the elders, there will be no youngsters. And in the West, we despise the elders. We despise the elderly. 
you know, we put them in nursing homes. We don't want to take care of them, but they took care of us. But remember, these people were young people too. And you're going to get old. And if you put your mother away in a nursing home, you're going to be put in there as well. So we have to be think very carefully and know what we're doing. Elderly people, when you get old and you can't be yourself, they used to say once a man, twice a child, and I see that over and over. You become a baby again. You have to be fed. You have to be somebody. Have to bathe you, and that's just the, the realities of life. So we don't want to act like our older people have become a burden. They 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 worked. They paid taxes. They did all these things. So if it's their time for you to help them, I don't see anything wrong with that. And like I have said just now, that these older people in the West are despised. But in the Caribbean, in third world countries, these people are revered and honored and respected. So you see the big difference? There's a big contrast there. And, and when it comes to the, the, the things of God, children compared to the children children in the third world countries compared to the children in the west they are more versed in the scriptures they have a rich godly heritage because their parents grandmother and parent and parents make sure they teach them the things of god and the word of god and they even have it in their school curriculum so we in the West have been deprived from a lot of godly things and we are at a disadvantage. We are at a disadvantage. We are suffering seriously from spiritual decline. We are in a spiritual deficit. We suffer from spiritual deficiency. We have lost it. I'm telling you, we have lost it. But God is giving us a little bit more time to get things together. Children should know how to communicate with their God. The man who created them, they should know him. And nobody robbed us, so we should not rob the young children either. Saturday and Sunday... Some people worship on a Saturday, some people worship on a Sunday. And those two, two, day, two days are for like, for, for, for the secular world, it's like they, those days you go to, the, to, shopping, to do shopping or you go to the movies. You understand what I'm saying? They don't, think, they don't teach their children about anything. But this is a setup. The powers that be, they already set it up for it to be like that. Because can you imagine if children knew the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. You think they would be going to school with guns? You think they would be doing some of these things that they are doing? Honor your mother and your father that your, your days may be long, the first commandment we promise. You think they would disrespect their parents and want to beat up their parents? No, but because there's no written stuff there for them to see or it is not reinforced it is written in the bible but nobody wants to read it and you know when things are in books <laughs> if you want to add knowledge you just put it in a book nobody don't want to read it but we have to learn to respect our elders and love them and but i want to encourage the elders there's a scripture in um Isaiah 49 verse 15, it says, He will not leave you in your old age. You will not cast you off in your old age. And in Psalms 41 verse 3, it says, He will spread your bed in your sickness. Yes, He will. And whatever He promised, He is able to perform. So we really have to take care of our elders and make sure we we talk to them and ask them questions, especially if they are godly people. Talk with them, get to know God through these people. 
And I would advise young people to get to know your God. Start praying and asking God to have mercy on you and show you the way because you have lost a lot. You have lost a lot. Something that you should have been taught when you were five and six while you were going to school. It, it is not there for you. So you have to make sure you do your own research and know God for yourself. And um, the book of John is a good place to start. It is one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. A good place. So, um, I think it's Psalm 25, verse 7. says, <clears throat> strength is wasted on youth. It says, remember, you, in Proverbs 12, I think it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. It says in a first thing, first John, one of them chap um, verses, it said, Young man, I write unto you because you're strong. Yes, you're strong. So you must remember God when you're youthful and strong, where you can praise him and do all this. You know, you can lift up the Lord, you can go where God wants you to go. And you have to make sure you find a mentor like Paul. Paul mentored Timothy, right? And he said, because Timothy's grandmother and mother's faith were strong, it fell on the young boy. And he carried on. And Paul didn't have any children, but he took Timothy up and he trained him well. So don't believe that um, old people are antiquated and they don't have any use. Because they took care of you when your mother went to work. They did all this. They fed you. They bathed you. Some grandparents, oh my God, they are the best. You know? So we really need to understand all these things. We're suffering, man, from a serious, 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 serious decline in our spirituality. Yes, we suffer, we're suffering terribly from that, right? There is an old adage that my mother used to 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 um to say and she still says it. She said if you kill Mumagi Pitney Pitney we near me, but if you kill Pitney Mumagi Pitney Pitney forgive me. It says if you kill Pitney gi Muma, Muma can eat it. But if you kill Muma gi Pitney Pitney we near me, I ask some more. Hmm? If you notice these young people today, they will come and then nice you because they want, you know, to see how much money they can get from you. And sometimes the parents have their house and they will kind of like sweet them up to sell it. And then when they sell the house, they put in a nursing home. That is what happens. is the reality. That is what is happening. Um, Getting rid of the old people. So the young people have nothing to fall back on spiritually. is a setup. It is wittingly and decisively done. You understand? They have nothing to fall back on spiritually. And many times, you know, I will hear people say, uh, you, 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 when you're doing your videos, you don't have to, don't make it so religious. Well, I do not teach or preach religion. I preach Jesus and him crucified. And it's very hard for me to be a Christian and do not involve God in what I do. I will not conform to the world because I'm already transformed by the renewing of my mind. So I cannot do what other people do. This is my calling. This is what I'm called to do. And I have to do it with life and dignity. And I'm going to do it until I can't do anymore. This is what I'm called to do. Talk about stuff like this. Yes, we have to talk about stuff like this. Let me tell you why you need to care for the elderly. I'm going to sing it in a song. 
there's a song that we used to hear. It says, remember when you couldn't even walk. Remember when you couldn't even talk. I said, remember who, who used to wash your clothes for you? Who used to wipe your nose for you? Who used to hug and kiss you? Remember who, who used to change your diaper? Who used to make your supper? Remember, it's your mother and father. So you have to honor your parents, revere them in the Caribbean and um, African countries and other places. People respect the elderly, take care of them, make sure so they can live long to be around for a long time. Because these people have some stories to tell you. That That is why I created this channel um, initially, you know, to pass on the oral tradition, the things that we have learned, you understand, in our cultures and all of that, so the rich culture that we have. But now I'm talking about our spiritual culture, not the, 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 the conscious culture now, but the, 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 the godly heritage that God has left us. We, we just put it aside. And if we don't store it up now, by the time your grandchildren have children, they won't, they won't have anything spiritual to fall back on, nothing. Everything will be gone. Because if you notice, everything goes now. As long as it feels good, I, will, I can do it. Anything goes now. Any everything goes, you know, because everybody want to do what everybody else is doing. If you notice, if a if a new style comes in, even if it it's not even, because not every style is fits everybody. And even if it doesn't fit, we want to we want to follow suit. We want to get involved in it. Everything that we see the world the world does, we want to do it too. Even in the church, just like yesterday was Halloween, and I try to tell people all the time that this Halloween thing has a demonic overtone. Do you know what goes on in the night? Huh? Do you know what goes on? But you want to dress up your children like this one, this princess, that. I don't care how, how nice you dress them up, even if you dress them up like the pastors. The pastor and his wife, you're still participating, and that is wrong. Nobody wants to tell you the truth, but the, the, the Bible said the, 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 you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. People want truth. We think people don't like truth, but people want truth. Even if they act like they don't want to hear it, they want to hear it. So we really, really are losing our young people because the older people are dying um, and more are going to die. So before they die and be no more, let us call them up, go and pay them a visit, you know. And you know, normally when you go to visit the elders, they're always talking about the Lord, talking about God. So try and see if you can get something in. And when it comes to the Bible, they, have, they still have Bible selling. So try to get one before you can get any more because they haven't taken them away from us yet. But we are in some dangerous times. We are heading towards some real rough times in the West and all over the world. But if we learn a thing or two about the Lord, we might be able to escape the judgment that is about to come upon us. As I go through my daily life, I've been in a few countries and I've been a few um, third world countries and a few first world countries. And when I look at the comparison, the people in the third world countries are more versed in the scriptures. The children, these children over here, don't, some of them don't even know what a Bible looks like, much just to read it. 
They don't know the Lord's spread. They don't know the Lord is my shepherd. The twenty-third Psalm. They don't know nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, even children who go to church, they don't know anything. Because we in we in a we in America. We live in England. We in the promised land, so we don't really need God. But we are deceiving ourselves if we think that. You know, and I want to encourage young people to go back to God. Go back to Him. Go back to Him. You understand? We have to go back to Him. I always like to be in the company of the, the elderly ladies because you, they always have something to teach you. And I'm always walking around in a notebook, you know want to talk to them because I know they always have something to teach you. As for my mother, she taught me how to save money. I always have something reserved for rainy day. Stop going around talking about how much you work and how much money you make and you don't have a dollar. Not even a penny save. It's not how much you work, mama said. It's how much you can save out of your work. My great-grandmother taught me how to economize and she always taught us don't borrow a new gland thread because that is the basic thing that you should have. She said don't run out of sugar and matches are cursing oil because you used to use lamb back then. I learned from a, an Italian lady how to save coupons because I never bothered with them. But when I started using them, I realized how much money I was would save when I do my groceries. Another lady I met, and she was always very quiet. And I said, why are you so quiet? She said, you only say what's necessary. And I said, yeah, that never left me. Because a lot of my friends still think I am secretive because I really don't tell my friends everything in my business. First of all, you cannot help me. So why would I tell you? Second, it's not your business, so I don't have to tell you. It's my business, and I choose to share what I want to share. Another lady I I I met, and she, she's from Newfoundland in Canada. She said, there is so much bad in the best of us, and there is so much good in the worst of us, that it does not behoove any of us to talk about the rest of us. And don't you know that's true? Because we will say this man is a murderer. But you know the man who is a murderer I will love because he loves his wife and his children and maybe his mother too. So it doesn't matter how terrible a person is, there's some good in them. And it doesn't matter how, 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 how good a person in them have some dirty ways in them. I because you not see. You understand what I'm saying? So, no matter what you see, people act like they're quiet. And we can't, if, when it comes to people, me been through, me, 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 me see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then nice looking, and then seem quiet and okay. But trust me. So, that's what I say. So, you, we, don't, we can't talk about other people because we all have issues, we all have flaws. None of us are flawless. None of us are flawless. So we just have to understand that this man treat people with respect, especially the elderly people, because when they're gone and not here anymore, no man, there is no way you can go and say, well, oh, what, what, what was going on back then? What did the Bible say? Because they're going to take away the Bible from us after a while, you know. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. We have to love God, you know. And they, they, they don't want you to know about God because they want you to be, be dear so you can. Whatever they offer you, you will just take it without questioning. There is no manual to say this is wrong or this is right. In fact, people are telling you now, no, there is no wrong and no right. No, they might, that they might tell you, no, no, 
there's nothing wrong and nothing right. Everything goes. We twisted. We have become twisted. There's a serious, serious, serious attack on our godly heritage. Serious attack on the things of God. But you know what? There are still a few in Sardis who have not defiled their garments and they are willing to go all the way. Because I know that the enemy was trying to stop me from coming on to do this. He was trying to stop me seriously. But whenever I am being pressured, that is when I get very determined I want to do what God says. So, even though the attack is on, we are going to carry on. Because even though um, Daniel knew there was evil determined against him, if he prayed, he still prayed. And he was even thrown in the lands then. But the lions did not arm him. The three Hebrew boys know that if they didn't eat the king's meat, they would be thrown in a fiery furnace. But God met them in the fire. The problem with us is that we don't want to go all the way. We are scared for our lives. But if you save your life, you shall lose it. And if you lose your life for Christ's sake, you shall find it. So this is all I got to say tonight about our young people and the elders and this video is going to be called a serious attack on our godly heritage it is a serious serious attack and we can't stop them from attacking us but we are going to do thus said the lord so until next week this is sister edward saying have a wonderful day in service and if you had gone to church yesterday i hope you had a wonderful time in the lord so the lord bless you until i see you again god bless you all